Hi there. I hope you've had a chance to check out some of the other videos in this series on getting started with TypeScript, where we're covering the core fundamentals that you need to know to use the language. So in this video, we're going to talk about something that I've mentioned briefly in a few others, but really haven't demoed. And that is this topic called generics. Now I'm just going to cover the basics of generics here, but I'm going to run off to typescriptlang.org slash play, like we've done in some of the previous videos and show you how we can get started with this. Now, the easiest way to get started with generics is with arrays. I think we're all used to arrays and we've probably done something like this where you have maybe let pets and then you have an array of maybe some pet names. Fido and I used to have a dog called Starsky and the list goes on. Now, right now, if we mouse over pets, you're gonna notice it figured out it's a string array, but a lot of times it makes sense to actually define the array, and I'll explain why, because if we do this, and now I mouse over it, it thinks it's an any array. Okay, so we could fix that. Let's put this back, and let's say we initialized it with nothing, just an empty array, and we could say it's a string array, and we covered this a little bit earlier in the type section of the course. Now I could come in and you know we could do pets.push and we could do Fido and whatever we want there. Now that is one way to define an array in TypeScript. Another way we could do this though is the following. We could say array of string. And this is a TypeScript specific syntax. And what it allows us to do now is say, yes, this is an array, but it's going to have string members, or we could do numbers. Now notice as I do that, it automatically breaks. Uh, obviously we added a string. Now my personal preference in this particular use case is to just go with the string and the brackets after it. I just think that's easier. I'm used to doing that in some other languages I work with as well. But this alternative syntax, and I'll just put it off to the right here, is certainly an option you could use when you define the type of any array that you have. So that would be one use case of generics. And the way I like to read these, you heard me say this earlier, is this is an array of, so it's almost like putting, if we were to write this out as a sentence, an array of a string, okay, of string types in other words. But the syntax we use, it kind of looks like an HTML tag or an XML tag or something like that. Now, there's other things we could do too, though. If we had a function, and let's just say this function, I'll just call it test, but it could take different data types. So instead of doing this, let's say it takes an ID of any, and in fact, let's just change that to an X and a Y to keep it really simple. Well, the problem with this is while putting any works, we know from some earlier videos that any means it could be anything. I mean, that's why it's called any. So what if we could make this where it's a little more flexible? Well, what I could do is I could put a generic marker here, okay, basically a placeholder for the type that I would like to go here and here. So now I could put a T and a T, and T stands for type. And then we would have some functionality. I'll just put some functionality, it doesn't really matter what it is. But when we call this, watch how it works. We would say test of, and if I wanted those two to be numbers, then I would say X is a two maybe, and Y is a five. Or I could do test of string, and we could pass in you know, value one and value two. Or I could pass in Booleans if I wanted. We could say Boolean, maybe it's a true and a false or something like that. Now, of course, this assumes that you need these types to be passed in different ways, but you don't want to put any, because if you do any, you really don't know what's being passed unless you do some additional type of type checks. So this is why we call it a code template. In reality, this is like having three versions of the same function. It'd be like doing this, we'd have function test, where X for the first one would be a number and Y would be a number. And I'll just put the brackets there. And then the second one would be like doing function test where X is a string and Y is a string and you get the idea. And then we could do the Booleans as well. 
But that's really what it does. It makes a template for us. So now we can pass in what T is, and then that can be used here, here, and it can be, even be used as the return type if we wanted to actually have a dedicated return type here. So I don't have a return type, but we could return just X, let's say, as an example. And that would be our return type of number, of string, or of Boolean. That, of course, would be optional. You could always return your own custom, you know, custom type could go right here as well. But that's a simple example of how you can get started using generics. There's a lot more you can do. If you run off to the docs, you can read up on generics and see how they can be used. But these are very common. If you're doing React with TypeScript, you'll see generics. If you're doing Angular, same story and Vue and a lot of the other libraries and frameworks out there. So knowing about these is good because you're going to come across them in various scenarios. So I hope that helps get you started with what a generic is. If you haven't checked out the other videos in this series, definitely check those out because we cover other things like types and classes and interfaces and more. So thanks for tuning in.